Hi, and welcome to this episode of our tutorial series on the API Framework version 3. In this episode, I want to talk about the open component. The open component belongs to the group of state components, meaning it defines the state of an actor. In this case, whether an actor is open or closed. In addition, um, it supports the functionality to handle simple component movement, very similar to the drag component. So here, I brought a few examples uh, with me. As with all state components, I can interact with them using the select component. This tool, for example, uses an angular movement. So if I select it, it the, the door component tells uh, the mesh to move in an angular way. So it can behave like a door. And uh, this draw, for example, uses a directional movement. So if I select it, the, the draw is being moved out and in. And this last example uh, uses a combination of several movement types. This can all be happening using the same uh, component. We have a circle in the middle, which uses a rotational movement. And we have two meshes, which move in a directional movement. So it looks something like this. Perfect. So now let's take a look at the open component in the, in the editor. So now here inside the editor, we can uh, create our own new actor using the open component. Um, to do that, we'll create an actor. And I'll just call that a draw because a draw is a very simple um, thing to interact with. And um, I'll create a new static mesh and call that the draw little one. And select a draw mesh which this is our sample draw mesh, but basically you can use any mesh, you know that. Um, I'll duplicate that and create a second one. And now to create interaction types, I will add the open component and the open component uh, on it, you can specify how things are going to move when they open or close. Um, again, this is a very, very fast and simple way to interact. So I'll just, uh, we, we have to open the, the tabs under settings, the name. And there we can specify what happens to our first draw when we open it. So our draw 01. We want it to move, um, for example, um, 30 units on the on the x-axis. So going back to the draw, we want it to move from 0 to 30. And we want it to move on the x-axis. You have three different types of transform. You can move it a linear, you can move it angular for, for rotation, or you can scale it for a scalar movement. And um, we specified as a duration, how long it takes for the, the draw to move this way. And for example, we say it's supposed to be supposed to take um, 0 0.5 seconds. Then we can also specify the curve, which is in, is out, is probably the, the most standard one, but you can uh, choose between linear, is in, and is out as well. And um, now to be able to interact with that, we can add a select component. Again, any interaction component, oh, other interaction components can interact with the open components as well. But the select component is just the easiest way. And um, as an interaction type, we have to specify that it's supposed to be talking to an open component. And um, it should also be said that it'll be tr uh, talking, uh, triggering also self. That means it also triggers the, the actor itself and not some other actor, the select component. And now the last thing we have to do, um, and this is very important, is almost, uh, so this is the same scheme for almost any component that we use, is this open component needs to know which draw is being meant. So we already typed in this key here, but this key needs to be referenced on, on the mesh somehow. And we always use the tags to be referencing. So on the, on the mesh draw 01, we set the component tag to be also draw 01. And now uh, this open component here is searching for uh, the mesh that has uh, tag 01 on it. OK, perfect. And now if we hit play, oh, sorry, um, it makes more sense if I put in the draw first. Uh, 
And because of the select, select component, we can select it. That is also being shown by the outline here. And now if I click on it, we see that we have a very, very simple movement on it, which is basically all, all that we need to know. Um, very important, the draw component is uh, there, the open component, sorry, is also able to trigger multiple meshes at the same time. So if we add, for example, another element for the second draw, so I'll add in a not uh, for another key for the draw 01. And I, for example, want to have that move half of the way, oh, 15 units. And I also want that to move on the X axis. And I want that, for example, to be much slower. So it takes, for example, three seconds. And now if I have the draw component, um, also have, so the second draw mesh also have the, um, the, the appropriate tag. So remember this tag has to be the same one that the open component requires here. And then if we save and compile that, we see that the other draw is moving as well, but very slowly because we, we have entered a different time for, for the movement there. And basically you can, um, with one component, define very complex movement across multiple meshes and have that, um, have fancy doors open with, with several locks set on turn and then several movements happening different, um, differently. Um, very important on the, on the draw. So if you have the open component here, you can also set it to open at the beginning. If you check open uh, and apply settings, then you see what it happens when it's open. And then if you hit play, it's open from the start. If I hit on it, it closes. So this is how you can specify some doors to be open uh, from begin play and some doors not to be. And um, the other major important thing with components in general is that the replication is being handled on the component itself. Meaning um, if we set the actor to replicate um, on the default, we set it to replicate. And then hit using a two player game. I'll um, oh yeah, this started using a two player game. I'll simply two players here and set the new editor mode, new editor window. We see if I hit it here, it also moves on the client. And if the client hits it here, it also moves on the server. So this is how these kind of things can be easily replicated and the user doesn't have to worry about a lot of things um, because the, the multiplayer is being handled by the component and the component can simply be added using this element here. Okay, so this is everything I wanted to talk about the open component. And um, this is a very simple but powerful component and um, I hope you can put, uh, put good use to it. And I will see you in the next episode.